fettuccine alfredo. This is the epitome of comfort food in my eyes. This American dish, yes it's American, it's not Italian. I don't think the Italians have cream in their pasta ever. Uh, I think there is a dish similar, but not quite the same. Anyway, this American dish only requires a few ingredients uh, and you can kind of change it to whatever you've kind of got going on in your fridge at the time. So let's talk through the ingredients. So first of all, the pasta. Uh, shout out to Andrew Babish for this recommendation and I think he's bang on with this one when I heard it about like a year ago. Uh, he, he was saying, I always use dried pasta unless I'm making my own. He was saying with this dish to use the store-bought pasta because the sauce sticks to it much better than it does dried pasta. Now obviously you go one step better than that and make your own pasta and it's even better, but it's a weeknight. Uh, you want to push something out quickly, not everyone's got time to make pasta. So use the fresh store-bought pasta, cooks it about two minutes, and because of the rougher surface, the sauce sticks to it a lot better. And the rest of the ingredients. So, heavy cream, good quality heavy cream is a must. Butter, um, I always just buy unsalted butter in case I need to do some baking. Garlic, thyme, parsley, parmesan obviously, and then mushrooms, and chicken. Now I think this recipe works really well with chicken breasts. So I don't buy chicken breasts very often, um, but I think this recipe, it works really well just because it's, um, the chicken breast texture's you know, a lot suppler and smoother um, and, and it just eats quite well on this pasta. So it's a pretty easy one to pull together. Let's get cracking. We're gonna start with the mushrooms. These ones are a bit dirty, so we're actually gonna wash them. I couldn't have picked a better night to make this dish. It's absolutely pouring outside. It doesn't really get cold on the Sunshine Coast, but certainly a bit chillier than it normally is. So the age-old debate of the mushrooms. Now, in restaurants, we were always taught to brush them. So we'd get a little pastry brush and we'd just brush all the dirt off them. Um, which works, but it's a long process. And I think with these butter mushrooms, they, they don't really absorb much moisture anyway. So, um, you know, we're not going for a Michelin star here. So if your mushrooms at home have a bit of dirt on them, just, just give them a rinse and dry them off well. And we're gonna pat them dry once the duck gets out of the way. In restaurants, we used to also just have to peel the mushrooms too, which was a fun job. So we're just gonna slice our mushrooms, keeping them relatively thick. I don't want them to disappear. And set them aside. All right, so let's get our garlic ready. So we don't want a crazy amount of garlic. I don't think, I actually don't think it's meant to have garlic in it at all, but it's the beauty of a recipe like this is you can kind of make it your own. Mince it up nice and fine. Set that aside. Just gonna pick some thyme. This knife is terrible. The handle is too big, so when you use it like that, you hit your knuckles. It's a bad design. How do people get that stuff wrong? Seriously. I might just grate some cheese now so that it's good to go. These like creamy chicken mushroom dishes remind me of my nana who used to make a dish, which I haven't made and should. Um, she used to make a dish called Chicken Alec King and it was like a very similar um, chicken, mushroom, white wine. And she'd serve it over rice. Um, it's one of the only dishes I remember my nana ever making. Not sure why. Anyway, a couple of pieces of butter. And then there's a reason. That's probably enough. It's about 100 grams. There's a reason I always leave the protein to last so you don't have to clean up twice. So I've always got a red board hanging around for meat. Makes life easier. It's not gonna move. So 
So I cut it straight down the middle and then just slices. So pretty, pretty thin. If you ever see me stumbling a little bit in the kitchen, it's because there's always three dogs under my feet. Always. And that's it. Everything prepped. So that took like what? 10 minutes to prep maybe? Put that aside. All right, water hasn't boiled yet, but as soon as that's boiled, we'll start cooking. So that's pretty important. Make sure your water's boiling for your pasta before you start cooking the dish, because it'll all come together pretty quickly. You know, you gotta make sure you season this dish well. Not well, but correctly. It's, there's not heaps going on in it. So if you don't, don't have enough salt and pepper in there, it can get pretty bland. So time to start cooking. So in a saucepan over a medium high heat, you're gonna add your butter and your olive oil. And then once that butter's pretty much melted, you're gonna add your garlic and your thyme. And you're just gonna saute that for a couple of minutes until it gets nice and fragrant. Uh, once that's been sauteed, you're gonna add in your chicken. Um, and once you've got your chicken in the pan, you're just gonna flatten it out nicely uh, and give it a good season with some salt and pepper. Once your chicken's uh, three quarters of the way cooked, Add your mushrooms and give the whole pot a good stir around and you just want to saute these mushrooms off for five to six minutes and you're just trying to get rid of some of the moisture. Then add your thickened cream. When I was like 20 years old, uh, just before I moved to London, my last job in New Zealand was at a cafe called Dizenkoff on Ponsby Road. That cafe is still there, I believe. It's been there forever. It's fantastic. If you're ever in Auckland, go check it out. But we used to have this dish on the menu there called uh, mushrooms on toast creative name um, but it was pretty much this it was like literally just mushrooms reduced in cream finished with balsamic vinegar and it was delicious served on sourdough lots of parsley and we used to sell like I don't know 30 or 40 a day it was crazy so this mushroom and creamy sauce thing it's been around forever and for good reason so at this point the sauce has been reducing for about five well actually probably about seven minutes now but it's time to cook our pasta so in the pasta goes into a pot of boiling salted water and this fresh store-bought pasta, it only cooks in about two minutes. Let's see our sauce is thickening here. Just be careful that we don't split this cream either. So now we are gonna add our parmesan to the sauce and just make sure that's kind of well incorporated and all mixed through properly before we drain our pasta. Before we drain the pasta, just gonna pull a bit of water out case we need it for the sauce. So fettuccine into the creamy mushroom and chicken sauce. Um, make sure that's well incorporated and at this point you can check for your consistency as well. If it's a bit thick, just add some of that pasta water that you kept from before, um, just to loosen it up a bit. So now you're just gonna chiffon out a little bit of, of parsley, but not too much. Uh, stir that through the sauce as well. And it's almost time to start plating. So pretty simple plating this one, center of the plate, um, and then garnish it with uh, some more Parmesan cheese, a bit more parsley, and some cracked black pepper, a little drizzle of olive oil. And there it is, fettuccine Alfredo. Classic all over the world, apart from Italy. Mm. It's so comforting. It's savory and creamy and delicious. Mate, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So today's a Sunday that I'm posting this, and I traditionally I've always posted on Wednesdays, but I'm gonna change that to Sunday, so you get two episodes this week. Um, so you'll get one episode every Sunday from me, no matter what, and hopefully I'll try and fit in another one sometimes as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, that helps me out a lot, uh, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Click the little bell icon, and until next week, we'll see you then. Peace.